everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hello, my name is Noelle. I am so glad that you found me and decided to click on my video and I hope you choose to stick around. In today's video, we are gonna be doing some more meal prepping, which I am all about lately. It is saving me a lot of time and money, which you guys know I am all about over here. So I'm definitely gonna try and keep this up for the long haul, fingers crossed. I have also been prepping lunches for the week, which is helping me out immensely. I don't have to think about what to make for the kids every single day. I just take out one of the lunches from the fridge, throw it in their lunchbox, and we are good to go. If you are interested to see meal prepping lunches, then I will link that in the eye in the sky and the description box down below. Definitely check it out. But in today's video, we are going to be prepping freezer meals. I am absolutely loving this lately. I love that I can take out a freezer meal, leave it in the fridge overnight until I get home, or leave it on the counter all day until I'm home for work. Then I can just pop it in the oven until it's cooked or warmed through and we have a hot and fresh meal ready to eat. If you guys are curious to see what freezer meals I am prepping for today and hopefully get a little bit of motivation along the way, then just keep watching. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna start off doing is filling a pot of water. So we can put that over on the stove to start boiling some of our pasta. This pasta is gonna be used for a pesto chicken Alfredo. This is a super simple four ingredient recipe that I love having on hand. Yes, it is quick to make, but it's even quicker when you make it this way, believe me. So over in this pot, I just have some lean ground pork, a couple different packages that I had laying around that I'm going to cook up and season with a little, um, no salt, just pepper, garlic powder, Italian seasoning and some parsley and just let that simmer on the stove until you know it extracts some fat and I drain that off a little bit and this is going to be for some breakfast burritos. I definitely prefer whenever I'm cooking any type of ground meat whether it's chicken, pork, beef that I chop it up really really finely because I don't prefer having huge chunks of meat in things. I like to have it kind of evenly throughout the entire dish. So as you can see, I just dumped in some fusilli pasta and some medium bow tie pasta, or some people like to call it farfalle. I always dump in the fusilli pasta first because that does take a few more minutes to cook than the bow ties. So I give that a little bit of a head start. Over here in this pot, I am starting to cook up some ground beef and I've just seasoned that with some onions and garlic powder and pepper, a little bit of salt, not too much. And again, the same thing. I'm just making sure that I, you know, chop this up into nice small pieces. And this tool that I'm using, I believe is called like a mix and chop. I just looked up meat chopper on Amazon and this is one of the tools that was decently priced. So I decided to grab that. I can link that in the iron sky or in the description box down below if you guys are interested but it is definitely my go-to tool in the kitchen when I am cooking up any kind of ground meat nice and small just the way I like it now that the pasta is all done cooking and it's drained I am just adding in a couple of jars of four cheese alfredo sauce along with two jars of pesto this is so good guys and so easy. It is definitely a meal that everyone will love. You can definitely make this vegetarian and leave the chicken out, but I really like adding chicken in. It gives it a nice protein. It's not too strong, you know, it's just perfect. So I'm just gonna mix in the Alfredo and the pesto, and then I will start chopping up some of the chicken. And this is chicken that I cook myself. I just buy some, you know, plain old chicken breast at the store and I pop it in the oven with just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil along with some barbecue chicken seasoning on top and this is my absolute favorite way to cook chicken breasts. It is amazing on sandwiches because it's seasoned and then it's amazing to add flavor to any dish that you'd like. This is also a really good way to help stretch any type of protein that you have. If you are not using protein as the bulk or base of your meal and adding it into something like this, it really helps cut down on the amount of protein each person is consuming basically. So I had three chicken breasts left and this is what I did with them. I chopped them up and added them into, you know, a big double batch of the chicken pesto pasta and it made those three chicken breasts stretch over so many more meals 
and it's something that is going to last for a while instead of just having three chicken breasts for us and you know one meal and done this is something that i try and do quite often especially with the rising costs of meat and everything else in the grocery stores as of lately this is definitely an easy way that you can help stretch your dollar on meats and such now I have just a couple of foil pans that I am spooning in the pesto pasta into. Now each one of these pans will do us like two separate meals. And when I say that, I mean that there's three of us that are eating from these pans. So that'll give us six meals all together from one pan and there's two pans so that's 12 servings all together plus in the pot there as you saw I still had some left over that I'm going to later on separate out into a few different containers so then we could have those for lunches or it can be used as a side for supper along with some vegetables that we might be having the possibilities are endless so now I am just writing out the name of the dish pesto chicken alfredo some instructions thaw in the fridge overnight bake at 350 until warmed through for about 20 minutes these foil pans I picked up at the dollar store they were two for a dollar so they didn't come with any type of lid but I don't mind that because I like writing on my foil and covering the top of each pan with it doesn't bother me in the least so that's what I'm going to do now, just covering them up, getting out, you know, as much air per se as I can, nice and tight on the top there. And now I have two pans ready to head into the freezer. So over here, as I was saying before, I am just going to be dividing what is left into a couple different containers. And again, these are not, you know, full size supper servings or anything like that. But it, like I say, it is enough for, you know, a little lunch or a side for supper. And that type of thing works out perfect for us because again, it is giving us a little bit more bulk to a meal. And it is just a super easy way to be able to stretch your dollar, stretch your food. You don't always have to have a huge, huge helping of pasta. That is a very thick and dense thing that sits in your stomach. It's not always the best for you, but great in a situation like this to go along with whatever else you're having. So now I'm just going to pop these in the fridge and they are ready to go for whenever we'd like to have them. Now I'm going to start softening one brick of cream cheese. I forgot to take this out of the fridge so it could soften on the counter. So now I am forced to wait for it to soften in the pot with the ground beef, but no big deal. It doesn't usually take too long. Over in my pasta pot, I have reboiled a pot of water and now I am just adding in some jumbo shells. This is going to be for the Mexican shells that I am also making the ground beef for. And as you can see, it doesn't take too, too long for the cream cheese to start melting down and mix in with the ground beef. Now I'm going to add in about half a jar of some salsa. I'm just using the mild version here, but you can use whatever you prefer. If you like spicy, then go ahead and use that. I always start on the cautious side, so I add a little bit at a time because I don't want the shells filling to be too sloppy and have it be running out of the shells. I usually end up using an entire jar, but like I say, to be cautious, I add it slowly until I can see the consistency of the ground beef and a full jar just worked out perfect. When cooking your jumbo shells, I do find that you need to be very careful and watch them very closely. You do not want to overcook them at all because if you do and they become too soft, they won't hold up when the filling is put inside of them. They are going to cook just a little bit longer in the oven, so you want to kind of slightly undercook them. So maybe like al dente cook them in the boiling water and then they can kind of finish cooking once they're stuck in the oven. As soon as you take them off of the stovetop and drain them, you immediately want to douse them with cold water to stop the cooking process. Again, this is to help them not to go soggy or overcooked so they can hold the filling nicely. Another reason rinsing the shells after they're done cooking is to help them not stick together while you're waiting to put the filling inside of them. Normally when you have a pasta, maybe you're mixing a sauce into them so that helps them not stick together. But for something like this where you don't really have a sauce necessarily on the outside of them, it's very helpful such as when you're making lasagna and things like that to rinse them and keep them separate from each other. 
Now I've just taken a can of some plain tomato sauce, poured that in the bottom and make sure I've just given an even layer to the bottom of the pan. This will help the shells not stick to the bottom when they're put in the oven while cooking. I am spooning about two tablespoons worth of filling into each shell and then I am topping it off with a little bit more tomato sauce, some Mexican blend cheese and moving that over to start onto the second pan. I love when I have little bits like this left over from making a freezer meal because then again like with the pesto pasta it is a great little lunch it doesn't have to look perfect especially for me yet it is stretching the meal stretching my dollar and not creating any waste now I am just writing on my foil Mexican stuffed shells thaw in fridge overnight or all day if I forget to take it out the night before. Bake at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes because like I said, most of this is pretty much cooked through. And another two super simple freezer meals ready to go. Next up, I've just thrown a couple more chicken breasts fully cooked into my KitchenAid to shred up. This is going to be the start of a few chicken enchilada freezer meals. One thing you will notice is that my kids are not big on spice, so I do alter this type of recipe from the way that is normally prepared to accommodate my children's tastes. I like spice, but them not so much. So as you can see, I dumped in a brick of some cream cheese, again, to help start melting that down so it's easier to incorporate into the chicken. And now, again, I am adding in about half a jar of some mild salsa and stirring that in. Again, I realized I will need an entire jar. This is a bit more of a chunky salsa, which I prefer, but it's still kind of thin enough, not as chunky, so the kids will still enjoy it. Once the cream cheese cheese starts to fully you know melt down you'll see like there's a few pockets of cream cheese that you really gotta make sure is stirred in again this isn't fully melted down so it will take a few minutes on the stovetop just to kind of get fully incorporated get all those flavors mixed in well together and then after that happens I am adding in a bunch of Mexican blend cheese as well whatever's left in this bag I'm adding in and then I'm going to add a little bit more from another bag so I would say maybe about two big handfuls so maybe about two cups ish of cheese altogether but honestly a lot of times I don't measure when I'm making things like this so it is just kind of whatever you prefer if you guys don't like as much cheese then don't add as much if you guys like more then definitely add more you can definitely suit these types of recipes to your taste and your family's taste it's completely up to you you know to make it whatever way your family likes it green chilies would be a really really good addition to this if your family can take the heat that is now I'm just taking a three tablespoon measure scoop I believe it is and adding in one scoop of filling into the soft tortilla shells and rolling them up and sticking them into the foil pan I am also not using any red or green enchilada sauce in the bottom or on top of these enchiladas because again, my kids aren't the biggest fan of spice, so I don't usually carry that in the house because if I'm making a meal, I am going to make a meal that all of us will eat, so I'm not, you know, wasting money on buying something once for one person. Again, trying to save that money, stretch your dollar right. Easier to make a meal that we'll all eat rather than just what one person will eat. And then there's also no fear of accidentally eating somebody's specific food that was made for them. I already had a bunch of taco-sized tortillas and burrito-sized tortillas in the house that I needed to use up, and I figured this was the perfect way to get them used up, along with having them used for my breakfast burritos later on in the video, because they are definitely something that freeze extremely well. Now I am just adding a bunch of the Mexican blend cheese to the top of these enchiladas to hopefully help with the lack of enchilada sauce on the top. I do like to make sure that there is a bunch of cheese on the top when there's no sauce because I do not like a crunchy hard enchilada. I do like the soft ones. So that's why I use the soft tortillas along with a bunch of cheese to help kind of cover it and protect it from the heat of the oven. Now I'm just creating the labels for the top say chicken enchiladas thaw on the fridge overnight bake at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes and there you have it we are done with three more freezer meals ready to go 
Lastly, we are going to start on the eggs for the breakfast burritos. Finally, I am just starting out by cracking a whole bunch of eggs into a bowl, adding a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of powdered garlic. Always got to season every layer, am I right? And I'm just whisking those up until they are very, very well combined. And I'm going to be throwing them in a pot on very low heat with a little bit of butter in the bottom to start cooking them low and slow to have some scrambled eggs for in the burritos. I learned quite some time ago that the best way to cook great scrambled eggs is to cook them very low and very slow. Obviously, when you put them in the pan, you don't want to have them up on a very high heat because you can tend to crisp them when you're cooking them too fast rather than having a nice fluffy scrambled egg which is what you want in a breakfast burrito so that is how i cook them again i do try and break them up quite a bit so when you have them in the breakfast burrito you don't have big chunks of everything i like to have everything really evenly spread out in and amongst the whole burrito you get a nice big mouthful of everything that's in there so the first set of burritos that I'm going to be making is obviously with some scrambled eggs, some of that Mexican blend cheese and or marble cheese. I know at this point I was starting to run low on the Mexican cheese. And I also have some bacon that I had cooked up previously for breakfast a couple days ago that I wanted to use up. But then the rest of the burritos will be the sausage egg and cheese that I started to make at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to stop talking, let you guys enjoy some music, and I will be back at the end to close out the video. enjoyed watching me prep my freezer meals for today if you have any tried and true favorite freezer meal recipes then please leave that in the comment section down below I'm always looking for new meals to try if you like this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video 
Also, don't forget to come back tomorrow when I am doing another Tuesday Tiny Tidy collab with a bunch of amazing ladies, including Jen from Happily Organized Chaos, Sunday Dawn from The Helpful Home, who is the creator of this series, and a bunch of other wonderful ladies. So until next time, guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye! Did you see